What's up everybody? We're back at Spades Poker House buying in for $300 and getting straight into this uh, action. There have been three or four chops in the first round. I've sat at this table and it comes to me and I don't want to be the evil villain at the table just yet. I have plenty of time to do that. So when I'm in the big blind and small blind has to chop again, I agree. And then it happens again when I'm in the small blind. And now because of this, I realize this is a very passive game. So to stop the chop, I start straddling, as you see here, on the button. This forces the small blind and big blind to act first and to ensure there is no more chops, at least when I'm on the button. Which brings me to tip number one, table dynamics. Recognizing game dynamics is important because you can use this to your advantage. A lot of times you will want to adapt your play to what the table is doing. That's why paying attention to the game is so important. If you are in a passive, tighter game, you will want to loosen up and be more aggressive, especially in position. If you are in a loose, crazy aggro game, you're gonna wanna tighten your range up and not put yourself in too many sticky situations. We'll give you a chance to select what style of play is gonna be most profitable for you or what style of play makes you feel most comfortable in that game. I think this is a very crucial tip for beginning players and it just overall gets you more involved in the game and paying attention to what's going on and what players are creating action or not giving action. Wes Cutshaw says, don't complain the game is bad. If you're sitting there, make it good. It's your fault the game is bad. Well, here I go, Wes. There is a raise in this hand, but it's also Omaha. Maybe we created some action. Continuing on, since I have taken notice of the way the table seems to be so somber and relaxed into just auto mucking, I am most definitely going to become more aggressive, especially in late position. So when I look down at A7 offsuit, this is a raise for sure. With one under the gun limp, I make it 15. The big blind calls and the early position limper calls. The flop's pretty decent, two, three, four, two diamonds. It gets checked to me and I'm definitely betting this with my draw and overs and position and the very likely chance that my opponents miss this board. I bet and they both fold. Incoming and Omaha hand, I am in the big blind and get dealt king king jack three with king three of clubs. There are four limps, small blind completes and now on to me, I could be wrong but I just don't feel right checking this. With my little knowledge of Omaha, I do feel like I should still be attempting to narrow the field here and with as passive as the table has been, I decide to raise the pot $25. I get three callers. This guy in the small blind who I'll get to later is one of the callers. So eh, I lost two players. Four ways to a flop that comes down slightly favorable. Ace, king, king. Yep, just flop quads. As great as that is, since I raised pot pre, most of them are going to assume I have aces or kings. So good flop, but also not a flop I think I'm going to win a large pot in unless someone has the royal flush draw and decides to bet it. Small blind checks, and I check, and it checks through. Turn is the seven of hearts. I try one more time to get someone to bet, but the action checks through again. I think in hindsight, I should have just tried to build a pot by leading flop or turn. Either way, the river is a jack and I bet $55 and everyone folds. Then a player calls out, your quads are good. And of course I don't show, just in case, you know, keep them guessing. Skip ahead a few hands and I've been splashing around a decent amount, more than I normally would. Straddling when I get the chance, there is a, another chop and now the player to my right, former player in the last hand of the small blind, elects to straddle under the gun. He has been talking a lot about poker and a situation he had at another club and a bad beat story, talking about his wins. So I take note and put him in my player category. Someone who knows about the game and pays some attention. He is a little more outgoing and louder than some players, looking for a conversation about poker and wants to be known by people as a poker player. His style seems to be to want to see a decent amount of flops and I keep putting a damper on that. Now I pick up Jack three of diamonds. I call the straddle. Quick note, if I'm going to be playing this hand, I need to be raising or I need to come in raising or if you decide to play hands like this, you should be raising with them. This hand would be in the vlog anyways, but 
I'm showing it for a specific reason here. No one raises and we go to a flop that gives me a flush draw. It checks to a late position player and he bets $20, I call and then it's heads up and we just check it down. But I end up at showdown winning the hand with Jack High. The player to my left grabs his chips and gets up and leaves so our player immediately asks for that seat to our left. And I do think this is partially because of our aggressive nature and loose style. And he doesn't like it. Add in our player now sees me roll jack high for the win, which has been the only hand I've shown down at this table to this point. I'm sure after all the pots I've been involved in, including the small ones I haven't shown on this vlog, he most likely notices and once he sees us roll jack three for the win, all his suspicions are confirmed. He perceives us as a very loose player and possibly a donkey. I notice he has watched me a few times and although he hasn't shown any hands, I can see mild frustration at the fact he hasn't really won any pots in this game yet. Then under the gun with ace jack of diamonds and he's to our left, I raise and he calls. The big blind also comes along. We are three ways to a flop that comes down seven deuce three with two diamonds. Pretty good flop. The big blind checks to me and I bet $40 pretty large. Our player folds and after some thought the big blind folds and we take this pot down. It might be hard to see but the button is right here. One hand goes by and the following hand the button is right here. I look down at ace nine offsuit under the gun and open to $12 and now our player decides to three bet us to $40. At this point you're probably asleep like let's get on with the hands but I'm driving a point home for tip number two. Take notes guys on the game on the players. I purposely went overboard with the description of this player and all the information I had on him to really drive home this point as to why I make a lot of the decisions I do in the game. And it's because of the notes I take and what I am developing as a read for a player. I think that this is probably the biggest thing any player, beginner, rec, intermediate can do to improve their game because you can really go back and look at whether it be the hand notes, which I'd have to take for you guys to get the correct information in the vlog, but reviewing these hands, looking at your plays, reviewing the players, and a lot of times you may run into these guys again, but to me, this is the best thing any player can do to help improve their game in live poker. Back to the hand, what do we do? In general, this is his first time three betting me, so I'm normally just folding here, and I assume he has it. I don't think in this situation I can do that though. I feel like he's been waiting for this moment. Any two Broadway cards, 8-8+, eight, eight plus, a lot of other hands this specific person could choose to 3-bet me with. At least that is my thought process. Is it a higher variance route and looking back, yes, he would have to be 3-betting me even wider, I think, to make this call profitable, especially out of position. I should just fold and assume he has it. And then if he starts three betting me more, I can choose to play back with less premium hands. Physically though, he looks like he really doesn't want to call either. He just looks slightly uncomfortable. Because of this, I'm automatically ruling out ace ace through queen queen. For all of these reasons, in game, good or bad, right or wrong, I decided to make the call. Now the flop comes down nine, four, five, rainbow. About as good as we could hope for, or could be a terrible flop for us. I decided to check it to him because most players when they miss are going to bet and I plan on check raising depending on his sizing. Boy are we in for a treat when he now decides to bet 1.5x pot of $125. I have to be honest, I don't know too many really good players who have a huge oversizing bet play in their arsenal on the flop. So you could say the bet is polarizing but on the flop. Would he do this with an overpair or would he bet something like two thirds to full pot? It just seems like he really wants me to fold as he's completely missed the flop with any two Broadway cards, mainly probably something like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, king, queen. He only has about $125 more behind, which makes the play even more weird. He is damn near committing himself and if I just flat, Neither of us have much incentive to fold beyond this point. I go with my read and I decide that this is just a play to get me completely off the flop and I re-raise all in and he quickly calls. 
After his snap, I quickly asked, do you have an overpair? And he says, yeah. that makes me chuckle. Like, who else would I be talking to? And he answered it as if he was saying, how could I ever have an overpair here? Which is good news. And he shows us Ace King offsuit. He says, run it once or three times. I said, that's fine. He chooses three times. We run out clean on the first two, but lose the third and get to pick up two thirds of the pot. The next hand we play could be argued as a fold from this position, but we're not playing the best poker of our lives right now. We get dealt pocket fives under the gun and we decide to go with a limp. We're not also that worried about someone behind us putting on the pressure. So there are two limps behind and the button raises the $15. I call and one of the limpers call behind. Three ways to a flop that comes. Queen, seven, five, nice. I check, middle position checks, and the button bets $40. It's a pretty big bet, signifying I think he's pretty strong, so I decide on a call hoping to keep the player behind in the pot. But he folds, the turn is the four spades, and I check once again. Now the button jams all in, and I of course snap call. The river is the jack of spades, he doesn't show, and we scoop this one up. Now on to a hand that is just terrible. I get dealt jack five of hearts in the big blind and there are four limps. The player in the small blind has been raising quite a bit and mostly it actually has been from the small blind. He does so again here and makes it $20, which brings me to poker tip number three, discipline. I think this tip is what separates truly good players from the mediocre players. And I think some of the best teachers are the ones that make this mistakes themselves. I also think that every player falls short in this category at times. So don't beat yourself up about it. The ones that can master this are the ones that become the truly great players. Stick to your game plan. Don't call with bad hands in bad spots just because you think you can win. Remain disciplined in your approach to poker and playing the best solid game you can and in life and you will see results so of course we fold psych what a lackluster tip that would be i call twenty dollars which is clearly a bad call and shows i'm not playing disciplined poker and allowing the game and my emotions to affect me in this hand two players call behind and we go four ways to a flop of ace eight four with two hearts that is not a good flop for me to get away from this hand small blind leads for thirty dollars I already made one mistake, so why not add another one? Now with a flush draw, I decide I'm going to raise the $75. And if this doesn't work, I can still hit and suck out and save myself. The other two players fold. Heads up to a turn that is the six of spades. And that adds a inside straight draw to our flush draw, giving me three additional donkey outs and the opponent leads for 125 which if we do the math is exactly by the skin of my teeth the price i would need to make this call correctly but my flush draw may not even be good here he has ace queen ace king ace ten of hearts in his range so why we need to play disciplined poker is the reason i am going over this hand we don't need to get involved in these situations but I call. We brick the river. He jams all in. And now I fold after losing nearly half my stack this hand. I'm not doing this from a position of superiority. I'm showing you guys that I make mistakes too. And going over these tips probably helps me more than it does you. <laughs> the final hand we will go over is a bomb pot hand. Quick tip number five don't play bomb pots. But I flop a set and play essentially to win one board and half the pot and this leads me to losing. Unless you have a good or great hand on both boards, don't continue in bomb pots. They end up chopping my money. I lose another hand with $100 left in my stack. Here is my fourth and final tip that incorporates the prior three tips knowing when it's time to leave. Recognizing when it's time to leave the game is extremely important to your bottom line. Knowing the game dynamics aren't good for you, you've lost interest, maybe you're not taking notes, 
you're not playing disciplined poker, you're not playing your game, maybe the game dried up, it's boring, it's slow, you don't like it, there's no action, maybe there's too much action for you, whatever it may be, but knowing when to leave a game that's not for you or you don't have an advantage in or you're not playing your best poker is huge. I thankfully recognized in this game that I was making some serious mistakes playing super undisciplined and just doing things I don't normally do. So I got up, we end up in this game for $300 and I cashed out for $100. And since I play this game for bread and meat, if I don't win, I don't eat. There's no uh, food vlog this week. There's nothing, I didn't, you know, I'm hungry out here. I need to go back to being disciplined and maybe not eating good food will help me recognize that if I want nice, good meals, I better get my head to the felt and focus. I will see you guys next time. And as always, we are headed to the moon. If you want some more GH Poker action, check out this video and smash that like and subscribe button like I did with Jack Five of Hearts.